everybody likes the crooked cock. Um, How does um, jail compare to prison? In my personal opinion, if you got time to do prison is the way to go. One million percent. So, so much better. So much more to do. You can actually go outside and walk around and see the sunlight. Check out a guitar with your ID or whatever. So much better to do time in prison. Like if you have a year to do, trust me, I'd rather be in prison than jail. Jail is like a deck of cards and a TV and a bunch of angry men that don't know their fate yet. At least men in prison have somewhat become resigned. Y'all had fate. cards? <laughs> 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 they had gone on a hunger strike the month before to get Kool-Aid at my jail. Ooh, um, damn. Yeah. Um, it was, uh, it, I was so glad to get out of jail. I didn't, sh- I didn't shower or eat for like two days, three days, however long I was in there. I was like, we'll get out soon. <laughs> Who can out soon? And then another day would pass. Like, yep. For sure today, right? Surely this is going to be the end of this. Yeah. You sure. guys were, were so close together, and you were both in federal prison. I was interested. I even wrote it down. I wanted oh, to were hear we, it. Were Kyle, we you, there uh, the same, literally there at the same identical time? No, I don't think so. I transferred out of Talladega in 2016. Okay, okay. But I was there from 14 to 16, and I did actually sit on the softball field at Talladega like 300 yards away from you would later be and go, bro, do you remember that Russian guy that used to do the gun videos on YouTube? My boy was like, yeah, man, FPS Russia, that shit was crazy. He had the gun thrower, the flamethrower and all the big guns. And I was like, yeah. And little did I know. I'll be staying down there soon. (laughs) Yeah. Right next door. He'd be at the camp just in a few short years, which I don't really know too terribly much about the camp. I had a friend called Atlas that came over from there, got caught with the phone, but from what I heard, it was a relatively sweet time. Right. I mean, Oh yeah. Yeah. I I think definitely compared to, to medium security because Everyone that had come from a medium security or that medium security prison was really happy to be in the camp. Hell um, yeah, but they were. And uh, like like a lot of them were, were would tell nightmare stories of that place. And whenever somebody would get caught, they they would be like, "I hope they just put them in the hole. They don't transfer them to medium." And uh, I remember right. one day they were try they were picking us out to go serve lunch up there because they were in lockdown. They were like everybody's they're locked down in their cells. And so their lunch is going to be passed through on a tray and it's not going to be a regular lunch. It'll be like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Mm, of course. Yeah. And, uh, and so they're picking out like five or 10 of us to go up there and make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches and put them through doors. And I'm like, I don't want to fucking go. And she's like, well, you don't have a choice. And I'm thinking like, I think I do probably, but I don't really want to <laughs> argue this. Let me just point out that I'm not medically cleared to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And that'll be that. Because that was the case. I always Ooh. dodged that medical clearance. As, like, like no matter TV what, TV test I was, or something. Why did you lie about having AIDS? No, I, I took the the TV test immediately. That was like the first or second thing they did. Yeah, they stick um, that in my arm yeah. like that. Yeah, they uh, they X rayed me and then they immediately like gave me the TB thing. Um, like uh, that that was the first. I, I had forgotten all about that, but uh, but no, it was um, just medical clearance, like basic physical to make sure that you weren't gonna drop Break dead, your spine mm-hmm. or something. Yeah, yeah passing out trays. Yeah. And I, I was, I was like, you guys would be liable if you send me up there to make sandwiches. And I, I keel over, and she's like, I, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> I was so glad I didn't want to go up there. It sounded scary. So, it's, Josh, it's, what was the trial like? like I spent a lot of time in that shoe. Oh, okay, so the trial, um, I didn't really technically have a trial because I did end up pleading guilty. Mm. Um, a lot of people say, oh, he pled guilty, he must be guilty or whatever, but um, I don't think they're aware of how the legal system really works, especially with the feds. Kyle, as you know, they've got a good 98, 99% conviction rate somewhere in that neighborhood. Damn. They're, I, uh, they you know, I, miss. I, I had to plead to two counts. I only did one of them. Yep, exactly. Like, yeah. Pretty much taking a plea deal. If you defend yourself and you're still found guilty, which you ultimately will be in 90 plus percent of cases, you're just going to get a lot more time for it. And I remember there's a point, there's a point during sentencing where the, where they're reading this thing out and maybe the judge is even reading it out. And he's, he's like, do you like, you're basically swearing that you are guilty. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Which one did you think you were innocent of Kyle? Distribution for sure. Like, so you got hit with a distribution charge. Yeah. Can I I jump in? I I thought distribution could be described as like sharing it with a girlfriend. That's how they you, described it. Which you were guilty of. The ju- Yeah, but that's nonsense. Like, like, like if, we, if, if we'd taken that and argued in like an open court, like that would they prove that you gave her some or whoever, There was a text message where I like invited her over to do The point is, I don't think a judge, the judge asked, he's like, he's like, all right, so there's the possession, but I don't understand the intent. And they're like, well, there was a message where he asked his girlfriend if she wanted to, to, to smoke the marijuana with him. And he's like, that's not, that's not intent to distribute. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't think like, it would meet the. And, and she's like, that. "Well, he, well, he, he thinks it is." And I'm like, "Yeah, yeah I guess I do." <laughs> like that's too late how now. It went down. 
Um, and, and there mm-hmm. was a point where it's like, do you swear that you, that, you, that you're guilty of the things you say you're guilty of? And I'm thinking like, God, I hope they don't hit with a perjury car- charge because I knew this shit. <laughs> yeah. What was the one you thought you were lying? You were innocent in one of now. these that you pled guilty I mean, to. So I, contempt, I was, possession. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I I'm had sorry, this shit in my pocket, you know, walking out of the post office when uh when they uh when they when they grabbed me. So, Does that so, inform me that basketball shorts were invoked in your uh, sentencing at some point? Yeah, yeah. Because I was wearing shorts, that meant that there was no. That meant that that was proof that I was heading straight back to my home because there's no way they made it sound like I was in my <laughs> underwear or like, or like a robe. <laughs> like they you were in a robe. Like, 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 like I was in a robe at the, I was in like, like running out to the mailbox or something or getting the paper. And, right, and like, yeah. obviously this guy, see, that's what that law or, or that idea would be meant for the guy in his robe at the end of the driveway, who, who's picking up a package and clearly taking it back into his house. Yeah. I'm down the road at a post office, like in my fucking car, like, I was wearing, wearing shorts, basketball shorts that people wear. All the time. It was August. Were they basketball shorts, Kyle? You always yeah. just said shorts. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just basketball shorts and like a t-shirt or something. And that's evidence that you were going straight home to smoke the marijuanas. Yeah, so that's what got him the uh, you know in, into the house or whatever. But all that got like knocked out. Um, that's why things went federal. But that's we, supposed we, to be First Amendment that you can wear whatever the flying fuck you want to wear without it being held against you. But uh, that whole thing was nonsense. But your thing is even more nonsense. Like 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 like. All right, so so I don't condone the things you said because you, you me neither. I would like again, to make that like, clear. I uh, a lot of people seem cool. to think that I'm saying I did nothing it, wrong. It Let me go ahead and nip that before we yeah, go further. I think it's what funny. I did was fucked. Punishment was warranted. My position is that the FBI is crooked, the prosecution system is crooked, and that my time was a little bit yeah. too much. I, I, that's it. No, no, a little. <laughs> you know so, what you we should have had sometimes. to do? Clean police cars. That would have been an appropriate punishment. See some probation or something. How about how about a video apology to the other guy? That's Ugh, a little rough. The kid in Virginia that reported <laughs> yeah. me. I'm pretty sure he was like 15 at the time. I don't even yeah, think he knows what Yeah, if you had to apologize to, to him and, and like, like, like that's what I, that's what I do if I'm the judge. You have to apologize to him and like use his screen name, and 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 like, like just embarrass yourself a little. And that's it. The idea of sending you to prison for like mm. popping off at the mouth while you're drunk and barely mm. considered an adult at 19. Like you can't even right. buy cigarettes at 19 anymore. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's, it's pretty fucking wild. And it man. sounds like there were a lot of like hedging statements. Like I'm obviously sar- I'm being sarcastic. I'm joking. Clearly, yes, there, I don't mean this. Like there was how, really how only one in? in particular with me that I can mm-hmm. really definitively say should have been you know the the clearance, if you will. It was when I did say it's called sarcasm. Point blank in the middle of my tirade, I did say it's called sarcasm. Molly to a player apparently named Molly, and then of course with my. uh very high brain capacity at that time. I said, LOL, do you like Molly, Molly? So, <laughs> and you can see where my head was here. at. That's a 10 out of 10 joke. <laughs> 10 out of 10. <laughs> you can see where my head was at. Did that, get brought, up, did that get brought up in the case at all? <laughs> no, it actually Yeah, now didn't. you're a dealer. They probably don't know what Molly is. Play. Every angle that wasn't this guy yelled this threat was really downplayed. They tried to belittle the fact that it was in an online game with anonymous names where your mm-hmm. chat disappears after 30 seconds. Uh, they tried to belittle the fact that teachers from the school wrote character reference letters for, for me on my behalf. Uh, the the assistant principal from my middle school, who spent most of his time at the high school and ostensibly would have died in any potential attack, mm-hmm. sat in the front row at my sentencing hearing and waved at me when I came in the door. Like they, they tried to belittle all of this and keep it really covered up. And I also meant to say that as far as the sentencing hearing goes, um, when I pled guilty at the time, there was a pending case for online threats, uh, Alonis versus United States. He's a guy who made a rap saying that he was going to kill his wife and then blow up a kindergarten or something stupid like that uh, in a rap Brian. song. He wrote it in a rap song, and it was a pending case before the Supreme Court. And at the time that I made my threats, the threshold for what, you know, the bar for the crime is, could a reasonable person, a reasonable third party, interpret it as being a legitimate threat? If the answer is yes, such as yelling fire in a theater or whatever, bomb on an airplane, if the, if the answer to that is yes, then it's not protected by the First Amendment. It was constituted as a true threat. Alonis versus United States actually raised the bar to now requiring proof of criminal intent. So if you, I made that threat today and I don't have guns in my home and they can tell that I was not trying to do anything other than piss off this one guy and not mm-hmm. cause a real panic, then I wouldn't go to prison for it today. What if you uh, threatened to go to the hospital bed of a former UFC fighter and slowly <laughs> choke the life out of him while you stare into his weak, weak eyes? Believe it or not, legal. 
<laughs> should be legal. Um, legal. Especially if, it's, if you make it a conditional statement, it's always always protected. Like if I get drafted into the military, I'm going to slaughter that man. Yeah, yeah. The what in broad if daylight it provides it's a lot normally of protected. Then no, I've run that by my buddy Cliff Hutchinson, Esquire. He, he, Thanks, really <laughs> <laughs> he said it was I, fine. Were there, were there any like boomer moments to the trial where like the prosecution is trying to take advantage of like a 70 year old judge being like, Your Honor, not only are these jokes uncouth and inappropriate, he was literally. Laughing his ass off, rolling on the a- floor, oh. laughing at the prospect of Columbine. My friend, is this, <laughs> My was there anything case. like that? My whole case was a boomer moment, man. <laughs> From start to finish, everything about my entire prosecution and sentencing was nothing but a boomer moment. At one point in time, I mentioned the fact that my case was defined by generation gap, and the judges and the prosecutors turned bright red, dude. The judge and the prosecutors got pissed off. The judge started slamming his gavel real hard, and like from then on out, it was. It was wild. Um, the, the worst part for me was whenever we were arguing the point in my pre-sentencing hearing, they said, the defendant downloaded a video game making fun of the Columbine shooting in 1999. And we argued, we said, objection. The FBI forensic analysis proved that he did not download the game. There was a Google search for it. The page was opened. The game was not downloaded, which was my story all along. The judge shrugged and goes, I don't know what the term download nor attempt to download means, so I don't find it to be relevant. You can have that objection. You win on that point. And I'm like, that was a fucking white elephant. That was a bittersweet present right there. Like, you win, mm. but it's not changing my yeah. mind about anything. You win, but he has such little capacity to understand the ramifications of you winning that point that it doesn't matter. Oh, yeah. Exactly. And it's a helpless moment. Like, like I didn't have that in, in, the, in the marijuana case, but when we had that gun possession charge, like when I was 22 – like that judge literally didn't know the law, and and like yep. like I, I I had all that nonsense printed off the internet, and I argued our fucking case in front of a goddamn judge and had a meltdown. If I hadn't said that, I think he was going to sentence us to something. Like 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 he was he was firing brimstone up there, and it was just nonsense. It, all we had done was open carried guns with carry permits. It's it's scary when the judge doesn't know some really relevant information. Yeah, recklessly swinging sentences out there, giving dudes 50 years and doesn't even know what the hell's going on. Yeah, it doesn't seem like there's any accountability for a lot of judges. They just kind of do their own thing, and and they're allowed to. Ironically, if you've ever served any time in jail or prison, you are not fit to determine the amount of time that other people should receive in jail or prison. You can't be a judge if you've actually been to prison. It's kind of odd if you ask me personally. Like, you all have no concept of what that time is actually like on a day to day basis, but you're just handing out 50s and 60s and 40s. And maybe they should, like, maybe yeah. they, they should treat prison time like they do with, uh, with like pepper spray. Like, like a cop can't carry the pepper spray unless he's been sprayed with it. Yep. Maybe, mm. maybe we should, maybe we should give you a little solitary confinement for a few weeks. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> if you, if you that would probably a do a lot for sentencing reform. I bet it would. Uh, unironically, like that would work. Like you put some 55 year old, 65 year old judge in solitary for one week. They'll be like, oh my God. This is brutal. I've been, I've been, I've been giving been people 50 years. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> Little eye opening. Something. I- <laughs> 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 ah, I ended on that note. I love the, the worst. The best shit I've ever heard.